Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my channel where today I'm talking a little bit about the Empress FX Zoya again, the patchable modular synthesizer in a little box uh, where the only limitation is your imagination and the CPU, of course, but also it's the encoder. Now, many of you may have noticed after you upgraded to firmware 1.13 particularly, that the encoder has changed behavior. So um, I'm just going to put in the value module here now. Uh, before, when you scrolled through a value, as you move the encoder a bit faster, it would scroll faster through it. And that behavior seems to have changed in 113. It is now a lot more linear and therefore a lot slower to go through a value range. Now, this causes two problems. First of all, uh, you still can't get the detailed values any easier than before. That's still easy to do with shift, though. But you have to spend so much more time using the encoder to go through the value range than you used to have to before, uh, which also puts more strain on the encoder. Another thing that seems to happen more easily with the new encoder behavior is if you try to move it very slowly, sometimes it actually jumps down in value. It's almost like it bounces back. Um, if you do it a little bit slower than that, it is faster and more reliable, but once you go a little bit too fast, it will bounce back. Uh, and this behavior is, of course, not ideal at all. Um, now, for the value modules, there is an easy way to get around this. It is by setting it in note value mode by pushing the encoder, and you only have a limited number of values to work with, and so it moves through the whole range quite quickly. But what if you have a module where you don't have that high a resolution? For instance, uh, let's do a VCA. So we got the level control here, which is one that takes a long time to scroll through. Now, there is a little trick here that I've started using on 113 is that I patch up value modules to most other modules because it's so much faster to control them. So as long as I'm using the encoder uh, for controlling a patch rather than a MIDI controller, I will patch up a value module to whatever I want to be able to adjust faster. And then I put the value module to note value. And then I can adjust this VCA much faster. So now it's at uh, minus infinite dB. If I move it up just a little bit now to halfway, and it's minus 533, and there we are, all the way up like that. And that is much faster than using the module in the VCA itself. It is a roundabout way of doing it, but it does make life a little bit easier. Now, what's the problem with the encoder? Well, uh, although the encoder can actually be damaged in a way that it doesn't work properly at all. Um, most of the time, a lot of the problem with the encoder stems from how the encoder reads its values. Uh, and by that, I mean the, the contacts inside the encoder that registers that it has moved. Um, the rest of it is programming, of course, uh, in the firmware. So if your encoder, when you move it one click, doesn't always move the value, oops, one step. See, mine now it moves one value every time I move it one click. But the problem, especially with the slow encoder and the uh, bouncing back of values gets greater if your encoder, when you do this, moving one click at a time, if it actually skips moving forward in value, because that means that it has not registered a change. And if that happens, you the first line of defense, the first course of action is to um, use contact spray on the encoder. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, so 
because that's what I've done with mine because mine was getting so hard to use that I took the knob off and I put on contact spray and I'll show you how to do that. Just put on some light here. Just move that a little bit to the side so you can see it without the glare. So um, contact spray. Well, first of all, you need to be able to get the knob off. And for this, you need a hex key. I've got two here. And the reason is that the size of this uh, hex bolt, that is the worm screw that holds this knob in place, is of such a size that you can use either a 1.5 millimeter metric or a 1 16th of an inch imperial hex key and they both work because the size difference between these two is small enough that it's within the tolerances of it. So you can actually use either of these. Um, if you have both, of course, you would use the bigger of them because you don't want to strip the bolt. So just a little bit like that. It doesn't take much to a little bit more, actually. Um, doesn't take more, much before it comes off. And you can see a little worm screw in there. Um, worm screw is also known as a grub screw when it's on a on a um, on an encoder like that or on a, on, a, on a knob. So this is our encoder here. And of course it works fine without the knob. Um, and inside here there are contacts that can get some corrosion on them. Uh, and this is where uh, contact cleaner comes in. So I've got this contact cleaner here. Um, this is a WD-40 brand contact cleaner. Not to be confused with what people call WD-40, which is the lubricator and, uh, well, not technically a lubricator. It's a water dispersant and rust um, solution. Um, so that's just the brand now. So ignore that. What you need is a contact cleaner. Uh, and this is a very good design for a uh, spray because it's got an integrated, uh, instead of having a cap and then a separate straw, it has a locking mechanism here. So it doesn't, it's closed when the straw is down and when the straw is up, it's open and the straw is already there. So that is a genius design uh, and uh, it makes life so much easier. Uh, if you want to use this. So what I do is I just put a little bit of this stuff into the encoder and I rotate it a bit. So spreading it around a bit and I can actually feel, feels as if I get a little bit more friction already on the knob, which is good. And then I'll just put the knob back on again. See, that's the correct way there. And tighten it. So when you tighten a, uh, a grub screw like this, you don't want to over tighten it. So when it's when you can't move it easily anymore, you just move it a little bit longer. Uh, that's you. And then of course, this should be enough in most cases for this to work better um, if if one of the problems that your encoder has is it's a little bit corroded. Now, at some point, of course, the encoder can wear down inside to such a degree that it will not be working, but um, if, if this is something that works for you using contact cleaner, then that, of course, is a good place to start before you send your Zoya off to, to Empress Effects to have it fixed or you have them send a new, um, a new encoder to you. Actually, mine feels a lot better now. Even though I've done this before once, uh, it actually feels much better now. Yeah, that is, it's not bouncing back. It's actually moving in the direction it's supposed to. And you can see now it actually moves through the 
value range faster than it did before. And the reason is that every time the encoder skips a value, uh, the way it, the algorithm of how the encoder is interpreted will then stop the fast movements. Um, oh, guys, much better. And so, see, now it's behaving like it should, really. Um, so it seems that even though um, the encoder is more prone to do this in 113, really the problem is that it just means the encoder needs to be cleaner for it to work properly in 113. So now this is so much better. So this just means it's not skipping any values and I can move through the range really fast like so. Brilliant. Right, so after cleaning, of course, it should work as good as mine does. You may need to clean it twice, actually. I've used contact spray twice now. This was the second time. Um, and the first time, I still had some problems. The second time, it works better. And also, I noticed when I used it now that my encoder got a little bit louder again. The clicking is louder, and I feel a little bit more resistance when I'm turning it, which is a good thing. So that seems to have worked a charm. So, and as long as you can move quickly through a value range, that is a sign that it is not skipping any to register any values and it is behaving the way it should. Now, if this problem persists, you can, of course, contact Empress Effects and they will sort it out for you, either by having you send them uh, your Zoya and they fix it for you, or they send you a new encoder uh, module. Um, it can be replaced. Um, I'm not sure how easy it is to do it yourself, though. It can be it could be a little bit tricky um, looking at what it looks like inside but it certainly is doable. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this useful. And uh, please like, share, comment, subscribe, join me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.